In this video, I want to show you a third way to make ethers. And this is from a dehydration reaction. We can take two alcohols. We can add acid. Often that might be sulfuric acid, something like that. And we can lose water. So we can lose two H's and an O. And I'll end up with an R bonded to an oxygen, bonded to an R prime. Here's how it works. Let's pick two, let's just pick an alcohol like ethanol and ethanol. We put our acid in there. What part of these molecules want to react with the acid? Well, these juicy lone pairs of electrons do. They're negative. So it'll attack, grab the H+. So now the oxygen has two hydrogens on it, only one lone pair of electrons, so it's got a positive charge. Three bonds and one lone pair. That makes a very good leaving group. So this other molecule can backside attack. That great water leaving group could leave. So now I have carbon, carbon, uh, let's see, oxygen, it's got a hydrogen and two carbons on it. So it's got a positive charge on the oxygen, plus water was my byproduct. And that's stable, neutral, very good leaving group. Well, so I need to clean this up with, a, with my water. It could come in, grab that H+, leave the electrons behind to make my final compound. So I made ether from ethanol and acid. Now this is a pretty good way industrially to make ethers, but I don't think it's the best way in the organic chemistry lab. I think the Williamson ether synthesis is better. And let's see if we can think about why that might be. On that example, both of the sides were equal. They were the same. But what if I was trying to make something like, um, take this alcohol, and this alcohol, methanol and isopropyl alcohol, to make isopropyl oxygen methyl. So I throw in sulfuric acid. I'm trying to pull off my water to make isopropyl oxygen methyl. The problem is you don't just have one molecule of each in there. I have a whole bunch of these in there. Well, what if two of those got together and lost water. Well, that would make this compound, which I'd have to separate away from what I was trying to make. Or what if two alcohols like methanol got together? Then I'd make dimethyl ether, and I'd have to separate that from what I was trying to make. Or even worse than that, let me draw my isopropyl alcohol this way. We can also protonate this, and we can lose our water this way and make a double bond. Draw on some hydrogens. We saw this dehydration and make alkenes previously. So this could go, grab that. I'll go through the mechanism real quick. So we made a good water leaving group up here. And then another water could pull that hydrogen off. Those electrons could fall in as that leaves to make my alkene. So there are several byproducts that maybe I don't want that would contaminate my mixture. Now, if I'm an industrial chemical company, I could do this, make all four of these things, separate them and sell all four of those to different people. But if in the lab I have very little of my product and I'm trying to make just that, and I think a better way would be the Williamson ether synthesis. I'll put a little link uh, to that video as well. Hey, subscribe to the channel and watch more of my organic chemistry videos.